Good afternoon, Redeemer family, and everybody joining us on the internet around the world. Our devotion for this afternoon is based on our epistle reading for this week. Our epistle reading for this week is 2 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, verses 1 to 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 to 10. <clears throat> I must go on boasting, though there is nothing to be gained by it, I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man was caught up into paradise, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And he heard things that cannot be told, which man can, may not utter. On behalf of this man I will boast, but on my own behalf I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. Though if I should wish to boast, I would be a, not be a fool, for I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think more of me than he sees in me or hears from me. So to keep me from being, being too elated by the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. <clears throat> I don't know about you, but there are times where when something difficult or painful is happening in my life, you try to discern, or at least I do, why is this here? Why has uh, God allowed this? Why has God brought this into my life? Is it to discipline me? And um, of course there's you know, scriptural backing for that line of thinking, especially in the book of Hebrews. God disciplines everyone he accepts as a son. But there's also this passage of scripture. Is this a thorn in the flesh? God is allowing to bring me to some humility. And so whatever the reason that God is allowing a thorn in the flesh for us, God has a purpose. God has a, a very important reason for allowing it, for bringing it, for bringing us that pain or that suffering or that hardship. So what is yours? What is your thorn in the flesh? What is your messenger of Satan? Because Satan wants to bring us suffering. Satan wants to bring us suffering. He wants to bring us pain. He wants to bring us hardship. He wants to bring all these things to us so that you know, we might possibly blame God and turn away from him. But God has another purpose. See, God allows these things always with a singular purpose to draw us closer to him in one way or the other. So God always has that purpose, to use pain and, and suffering and hardship and trial to draw us to him, to draw us uh, in a relationship ever closer to him. What's yours? Is it a disease? Is it pain? Is it a temptation? Is it some other type of thing that's befallen you and your family? As faith grows, sometimes it's, it's tempting, as in Paul saying, it's tempting to become so elated and, and that we think that we are so blessed that nothing can touch us. And God needs to remind us that he's in control and that we still need to trust him and that we all need a dose of humility from time to time. And so rather than becoming overly 
elated in ourselves or conceited, it brings us back to earth. It reminds us who is really in charge and forces us to trust in him, to depend on him, to rely on him. And that's so important. You see, God allowed Jesus to suffer. He allowed Jesus to suffer to bring us good. He allowed Jesus to suffer to free us from sin, to free us from death and the power of the devil, and to replace all of that with life and salvation. Always to draw us close to him. And while Jesus suffered great humiliation and great humility while he was here on earth, yet he was exalted in the end. And so too will we be exalted Exalted as we receive the glories of everlasting life. But in the here and now, in the meantime, we might face our own thorn in the flesh. But hear Paul's words again. He says, in verse 9, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. And Paul's final word in verse 10 for when I am weak, then I am strong. Recognize those thorns in the flesh are there for a reason. If God removes them, praise the Lord. If God allows them to remain, praise the Lord. Because that means he's working. His grace is sufficient for you. His power is made perfect in weakness. For when we are weak and we are strong, strong in him, strong with him, strong because of him. In Jesus' name, amen. Please pray with me. Father in heaven, there are times in our lives that we're going to face some sufferings, some trials, some hardships, some ongoing temptations that we just cannot get free of. And we ask that you would Help us to remember your word here through Paul, that your grace is sufficient for each and every one of us, that your power is made perfect in weakness. Help us to remember those words and cling to them, knowing that you alone can bring good. You alone can do a great work through painful and trying and uh, suffering circumstances. Strengthen us in our faith that we may hold tightly to you, and especially in the midst of our thorns in the flesh. And help us to remember, when we are weak, then you are strong. In your name, amen. Have a blessed Wednesday, and I pray that you will uh, have a beautiful and glorious day today from the Lord, and look forward to having you join tomorrow as we have tomorrow's devotion the last one for this week. Have a blessed Wednesday. <laughs>